everybody. My name is John Gilligan. Uh, was there Americans in the house that were here before? Good, good. You'll get most of this then. I am the representative for white people west of the Rocky Mountains. That covers FEMA Zone 7, and I know some of you guys are skeptical. That's my certificate of completion. I had to take a two-week class on how to be a white guy. How to make hot, open-faced meatloaf sandwiches and stuff. They sent me over here to deliver some information to you guys, and I had trouble printing it up. This is what happens when you try and print up United States government documents. I had to take a I had to take a couple of notes, but on the right, the right over here, I, I wrote in with the guy Joe, who puts all this together. Do me a favor, put your hands together for Hank, our host. We had Alex and Boris his first time. Molly Clapp and Keith Grover, our bar staff back there. I had this whole routine all worked out for me, but I told Joe that I was going to get up here and tell you guys a couple of stories. I'm a disabled veteran. I was in... I, I, I'm a veteran of the Cold War. I served in the big one, Panama. <laughs> I was wounded twice in action. The first time I suffered serious burns snorkeling off the coast of St. Thomas. <laughs> we weren't currently at war with them, but we were still around. The second time I got hit by a car in a crosswalk. Now, when I was younger, I used to think to myself, if somebody was coming at me with a car, I would just Bruce Lee over the roof. Bruce Lee's like Jackie Chan, but years ago. I would just Jackie Chan over the roof and get up and whip somebody's ass. The actual thing that happens is you make a noise like a six-year-old girl. I put out my hand and tried to stop the car when I heard the brakes. I don't know if you guys like science, but at that point you become a full-grown Enelieber. And I went 15 feet in the air and 25 feet that way and landed on my head. Thank God, or I could have been hurt. But like weird stuff like this happens to me. I have a scar on my head. Does anybody else have a scar on their head? They're not that uncommon. Did you get yours by being attacked by a peregrine falcon? <laughs> you see? Weird shit happened. I, I'm from New York City originally. My friend's family owned the lot next to their house and they raised farm animals in New York City. Goats and pigs and all kinds of crap. And we walked into his house. My friend Mark was the tallest one at 5'9". And we walk in the house and he says, duck. So I looked. I didn't want to step on a duck puppy. They're cute. I don't want to be that cute. And wham! Side of the head. I said, what the fuck was that? He said, it was a peregrine falcon. I said, duck. I said, if you'd have said falcon, I would have ducked that one. <laughs> like that, I'm keeping that one. <laughs> now, I've had a shoulder surgery, and I've had eight knee surgeries. That's why I say I'm a disabled veteran. They're not really hand in hand. I didn't get disabled by getting it. <laughs> in the face of the car. <laughs> I've been operated on so many times that if I wake up with a hangover, I'll put my bathroom on backwards out of habit. That's how bad it is. Now, in 2003, I paralyzed myself from the waist down. I'm very lucky to be standing here on the stage right now. I was stealing a boulder <laughs> to landscape the front of my house in Las Vegas. That's called karma. You should Google that. <laughs> They, they knew that I had a bad back and they were going to operate anyway. And I went out and got drunk and that's when you get super strong and try and steal boulders and the disc popped out into my intestines and shut everything down from the waist down. So they bring me in sooner than planned to do this operation. They went through the front and they replaced three discs with slices of thigh bones from cadavers. Now I don't remember checking that on my organ donor thing on my driver's license, but. When I woke up, I couldn't catch my breath, and this fat lady is slapping me in the face. John, you have to wake up. John, you have to wake up. I said, what are you doing? And I looked, and I had a thing on my finger, a blood pressure thing, a pulse, whatever it was. I looked at that, and I touched my face, and I had oxygen tubes in my nose, and I had an IV in my neck, and I was like, what is going on here? I had another IV in my hand, I reached down, I had a catheter. Anybody ever had a catheter? People who have just made a face that looks painful. I'll explain to you what a catheter is. It's a tube about this big that they shove up your pee hole because you're going to have trouble walking to the bathroom after back surgery. Now, I wish I still had that catheter so I could sit around and just watch TV without ever having to come and leave the room. The lady says, what did you just say? I said, I can't catch my breath. She said, say that in English. I 
thought I did. I thought I spoke pretty good English. She said, we need a gurney. I said, what the fuck are you yelling for? What's the matter? She said, you might have a blood clot in your leg, and if it gets up to your lungs, you're going to die. Well, where's your fucking gurney? They can't find a gurney. What they get is a wheelchair and two gigantic Filipino guys, like five foot one and five foot two. <laughs> The first guy, they put me in the wheelchair, and the first guy hands me the bag of urine from my, my catheter. But I had been cut open front and back for this surgery, and I had no muscle control, and I started to lean over in that chair. And he just hit me in the head and pushed me back, and the other guy gave me an IV tower full of stuff, and I started to go that way. <laughs> he hit me in the head, and I just decided, I'm to hang on with my elbows, and they put me in this MRI, Magnetic Resonance Imaging Machine. Has anybody ever had an MRI? If you haven't, don't worry, you'll get old and break a hip, you'll need an MRI. There's two rules for those. One, stay perfectly still. Two, do not bring any metal objects into this machine. I had been closed up in the front with stainless steel staples. And I started to smell what, what, what smelled like an American hot dog on a barbecue. What is that? And I was so drugged up from the anesthesia, I thought maybe the lady in the booth was having a cookout. <laughs> and I looked down and I was on fire. And I raised my hand and the lady said, what seems to be the problem? I said, I'm on fire. She said, that's perfectly natural. I said, push it. <laughs> I've been in construction for 20 years. The least you can do is come out here and urinate on me to prevent infection. Save the first, that's my model. I was not having a blood clot. The medical term is nicotine fit. <laughs> so they were not happy, and they dumped me back in a wheelchair and brought me upstairs. I had surgical stockings on me. Put a lot of pressure on your legs to keep the blood pumping back because you're on flat on your back. They slid down towards my knees, and the lady was pulling them up. She got one side all the way to the top. She had to go around the other side of the bed. She was pulling it up, and her hand slipped, and she punched me right in the balls. <laughs> yeah, weird stuff happens to me. So now, after all of this, the eight knee surgeries, and then I had a heart attack. I had a massive heart attack three years ago. And when I was in the hospital, I posted on Facebook, had a massive heart attack, and six people clicked like. <laughs> I don't appreciate that to this day. Because of all of this, I'm handicapped or disabled, however you like to phrase that, which makes me retarded in the truest sense of the word. Now, in the United States, I always get a college student who gets upset when I use the word retarded. First of all, it's our word. I don't need help from normies telling me what words I can use and what words I can't use. But in the truest sense of the word, after all of these accidents, the chances of me becoming a world champion snowboarder have been retarded. <laughs> to retard means to stop, slow, or impede the progress of something. Fair enough. If you had a house in the woods, and the woods were on fire, and I said, listen, I have a foam. I can come spray on your house, and it will retard the flames. You'd be like, John's on the way over with a truckload of retards. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> So, I told this story recently, we were doing a show, and somebody said, that's brilliant. I didn't realize that I was also retarded. I said, brilliant is kind of a harsh word for somebody like myself. I'm not an idiot that's below retard. <laughs> I'm going to try and wrap this up as politely as I can. I recently discovered a toothbrush that uses batteries, and it vibrates. It's the best toothbrush I've ever had in my life. It replaced every other toothbrush I've ever used. Then Gillette makes a razor with five blades and a battery. Guess what it does? It vibrates. <laughs> it has replaced every other razor I've ever used in my life. That explains what's going on in my wife's underwear drawer and why I don't get laid anymore. <laughs> Now, let me just say this before I go. I use medical marijuana. I know in some of these countries around here it's legal, people are very liberal about it. In the United States it's still kind of uh, an iffy subject for people to talk about. They'd rather have something prescribed to them, so that's why they're trying to get this done. For three years now I've been using medical marijuana. The previous 22 years was recreational. <laughs> I have seen two commercials recently on television in the United States. One of them mentioned the word 
vaginitis. I guess that's like bad breath or something down there. I don't know, but there's a pill for that. The other one was Risperdal. I don't know if you guys have Risperdal over in this country. Risperdal is given to young men, adolescents, who have attention deficit disorder or hyperactivity disorder or uh, schizophrenia. There's a couple of those things like that. It has some serious side effects, one of them being that you grow female breasts, another one being that they lactate. And the only solution for these young boys is to go and have their new breasts surgically removed. And all I want to say is, if you think your kid got made fun of because he was a fucking schizo, wait till he shows up at school Tuesday with leaky girl tits. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is John Gilligan. You guys have been a great audience. Give a vote for your host, Hank. I just want to say, I love this country. Thank you, guys. Let's say uh, 9 o'clock sharp, we'll be back here. Okay. Yeah. See you at 9.